Alright, countdown to live video weather blog weather overtime for Monday in 3, 2, 1, and we are go. So as of right now, quiet for the most part. We are still looking for the potential of some more showers out there. We're going to give you a complete check of the forecast coming up here in just a little bit. But for right now, again, not that much going on. It's just about 20 till 10 Eastern time. So for the most part, what we had in the way of thunderstorms from earlier now making their way down to the south of us. We are waiting to see if we pick up any more activity. But for right now, the heaviest is all the way back toward the Mississippi Valley portions of Missouri and Arkansas. And then a few more showers trying to get a few thunderstorms going up around Johnson City and Bristol. Most of the activity from earlier today trying to hold together between Atlanta and Birmingham, but there's really just not that much out there uh, for this evening. We may see a stray shower or two, but for right now, it looks like most everything is decently quiet. And again, hopefully we'll stay that way, but we do still have the potential of some activity coming our direction as we get into tomorrow with the potential of maybe some severe weather out there. I'm Chief Meteorologist Austin Onik. If you are just joining us, it's just about 10 o'clock Eastern Time on Monday. This is our live video weather blog, Weather Overtime. Got any questions about the forecast, go ahead and drop them into the comments section. We'll answer what we can and keep an eye on what's going on in your forecast for the next couple of days. We'll have that information here for you coming up in just a little bit. Forecast again, pretty innocuous. We'll talk about that in just a little bit. From our own Andrew Harrison going to the Thrillville Fair at Camp Georgia looking up at Kong's Tower. Apparently, Andrew's son is up there someplace, so thank you very much for that aerial view from down below. A little bit too much in the way of heights for me, but hey, if that's what you like to do, party on, Garth. Looking again at uh, more potential of pictures out there, we'd love to see them, and all you have to do to show them to us is just put them to our social media channels or email them to us at pictures at wdef.com. Include a location and whatever it is you were looking at in the for in that area. Uh, again, you don't have to use your name, so if you want to be anonymous, that's totally cool. But on the other hand, uh, we'd like to know a little bit more about what you were looking at and where, just to give us a bit of location so we can tell everybody else about what you were looking at at the time. Yesterday, we came in to within 4 degrees of a record high temperature. Today, it was 7. It was about 5 degrees above normal about just shy of eight degrees above normal for a low temperature and a record low temperature that hasn't been broken since 1888 of 40 degrees. Not that chilly out there. It was a little bit on the breezy side and will continue to be on the breezy side uh, tomorrow from what it looks like as well. Still behind for the month and the year. We only picked up about seven hundredths of an inch of rain for the entire evening. So not really seeing too much of a problem uh, with rainfall. For the most part, we could use more before we get into a drought territory situation. Good fishing conditions according to the websites uh, for Tuesday. But again, there will be that potential of showers and thunderstorms out there. And please remember that if you're going to be out on a broad flat surface with a large fishing pole with metal attached to it. Uh, not exactly the best place to be with lightning around. Likewise, if you're going to be heading out to play some rounds of golf earlier, it would be better than later. And there will be chances of showers and thunderstorms out there. So again, big flat area, widespread, not much protection except for trees and a big metal pole out there with metal spikes on your shoes. Not the best place to be for lightning, but you might be able to get a couple of holes in before the chances of rain start heading our direction into the rest of the forecast. The way it shapes up is this. The big picture is showing one of two storm systems on the way. This one is just slowly kind of wandering its way on through, but the closer it gets to us, the more energy we'll be getting into the, the atmosphere, and we'll see the potential for more chances of showers and thunderstorms the closest it gets to us. Now, this is storm system number one of two. So this will be our major weather maker for the next day or two. After that, things relatively quiet, and we'll show you why coming up here uh, in just a little bit. Number two storm system will be on the way toward about the middle of the week, and it's all the way up here toward about Hudson Bay and southern Canada. This is going to give us the potential of some drier air coming through 
might knock the temperatures down a little bit but it's going to be difficult to show as of right now uh, a very cool forecast unfortunately it also is going to bring down with it the potential of maybe some wildfire smoke across parts of alberta canada let's go to the maps and give you an idea as to what we're getting overnight tonight into tomorrow morning very much on the mild side partly cloudy and just cloud cover expected we're not looking at much of anything out there in the way of major concerns for now maybe a dribble of rainfall overnight but really that's going to be about it through tomorrow afternoon we'll start to see more chances of showers and thunderstorms coming through especially at the peak heating time of the day that's when the best chances of showers and thunderstorms turning stronger might be happening that passes through and then we get into early wednesday morning a few showers maybe a few thunderstorms between huntsville and birmingham passing on down to our south and to our east and then by wednesday afternoon there may be some scattered showers and thunderstorms coming on through but that'll be mainly south of chattanooga what we're going to be looking for is that front coming down from the north that's going to be changing the winds around back to the north and to the the east and that's going to take our temperatures and drop them maybe a little bit into very early Thursday morning so we could see some numbers back in the lower to mid 60s or so and then a chance of showers and thunderstorms return to the area on Thursday right along that boundary out there there's really not that much that we're going to be seeing again in the way of major amounts of rainfall possible yes just not on the likely side out there for right now so much of what we're looking for the time frame is going to be scattered activity for the most part now for severe weather chances this is what we're looking at for tonight again a marginal threat which has now been trimmed back we're not seeing anything in the way of major problems but again one or two thunderstorms overnight will not be out of the question the possibility into tomorrow and this is where it gets kind of interesting for the day two forecast this is where we're showing the potential of maybe some showers and thunderstorms that could be a little bit on the stronger side so for right now we are getting the potential of some more stronger storms coming through as we get into around tomorrow afternoon and we're talking about the eastern third of tennessee extreme northern georgia back into parts of the carolinas so this doesn't affect everybody we do still have a marginal lesser threat but still possible uh, into some of the area here and that's where we're going to be seeing again uh, the worst of the worst in that slight category going on through what exactly are we looking at when it comes to the potential of severe weather uh, for right now the main threat is going to be again the potential for uh, looking at the possibility uh, let's see if I can get this here okay for tomorrow we are seeing that slight risk category and in that slight risk category the worst of the worst is going to be again the potential for damaging winds 55 miles per hour plus lesser effect but still possible of large hail and possibly some flash flooding is non-zero but very close to zero threat of tornadoes something else we'll have to watch out for and again best time frame is going to be in the afternoon and evening right about drive time at about the time the kids are coming home from school this is not a severe weather major outbreak again a slight risk category is definitely not looking at anything really major here but it does need to be watched very carefully and need to be prepared for just to be on the safe side and make certain that you're ready to go all right i'm talking about again the second storm system up here as this begins to get a little bit closer to us way up into alberta canada around calgary and many other places up there there are numerous wildfires going on and that smoke it's one of the things that you have to deal with when you live in a terrarium in space we don't get fresh air coming in from other places the smoke has to go somewhere and in about the next couple of days we're going to be looking for that potential of the smoke wandering southward into our area now this is a couple of thousand of miles away so what we see up here by the time this arc gets down our direction we see some potential of that smoke making its way into middle and western tennessee some of the residual amount of smoke might be coming through here so wednesday and thursday it might look a little more hazy out there as that smoke rides that front and right along that area coming on down to the south but 
Here's where it gets interesting. Notice again that right up here toward the end of the loop, we start to see more smoke forming, and that could reinforce the smoke that comes down this direction here. So the mid and upper Mississippi Valley, the Great Lakes into the Midwest and down our direction, this is where we might see the potential of smoke coming on through. And it's not going to be a major threat. It's not a health hazard. We're not going to see uh, decreased AQIs, air quality indexes. We might see a few north of us, depending on how thick this smoke is. The Twin Cities down to around Missouri, that's where we could get some of the worst of the worst for now, but this is just a model and models can change. So what we're seeing is all that smoke there toward the end of the loop, that stuff could wander its way down our direction and we could be looking at the potential of more in uh, the way of smoke coming through. So some hazy conditions, Maybe a bit of a problem for anybody who's got lung ailments, emphysema, asthmatics, anybody like that. But right now, it doesn't really appear to be a major concern uh, for right now. It's just a unique thing that happens in, again, living in a terrarium. So something to think about there. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at your forecast into the rest of the week. And again, so far, we're just seeing uh, the what's going to be changing is mainly going to be the temperature is going downwards by just a little bit toward weeks end. Numbers, this is right about where we should be. Lower 80s, that's normal for this time of the year for this area of the country. Showers and thunderstorms possible through about Thursday. A bit of a break on Friday. Saturday into Sunday, we may see the potential of some more uh, showers and thunderstorms there, but then also on the clearer side into next Monday. And temperatures hovering almost exactly where they should be. We are getting a decent extended springtime. We haven't just jumped right into the 90s just yet. We've come close, but we have not actually gotten there for right now. So numbers really on the warmer side, very humid tomorrow, so dress cool. And over the next several days, that's where we see the potential of some more areas of warm conditions, humid, maybe a little less so as the drier air sinks on through maybe some hazy skies. We've kept the hazy forecast out of here for right now. We'll see what happens when that smoke gets closer to us. And again, for tomorrow, that slight risk of severe weather could be uh, just a bit of an issue. Also, tomorrow afternoon, and should mention this, don't have the graphic ready to go right now, but tomorrow afternoon and evening could be some rain delays for the lookouts next game. So something to consider there if you are going to be uh, heading for the ball game tomorrow night in downtown Chattanooga. One other thing to touch on, and this is something that uh, you may seem a little bit out of uh, touch, out of point for this area for right now in this part of the country and for this uh, this time of the year. But right now, <clears throat> as of tonight, excuse me, we are just about two weeks away from the start of hurricane season in the Atlantic. The Pacific hurricane season begins today and continues on into the next several weeks. So we thought it would be best to go ahead and bring back the tropical outlook just to see what's going on. Two important things. That Number one, today is the first day that the National Hurricane Center issues these forecasts on the 15th and then all the way out through about December the 1st. So we're heading into another hurricane season pretty soon. What effect El Nino has on that is still kind of up in the air. It's estimated that it may cause a little bit of a drop in the hurricane season expectations. But again, there's a lot of factors in play here, so a lot can change as we go into the next few weeks. So we could see an uptick in the number of storms, or because of El Nino out in the Pacific, we could see a bit of a downturn. But right now, it's still just a little bit too early to tell. The second big thing to tell you about is that the forecasts have kind of improved a little bit to where the Hurricane Center is now not issuing two to five day forecasts, it's issuing two to seven day forecasts. And that's kind of cool to be able to see a little bit farther out. Again, the farther out you go, the less, again, firm the forecast becomes. The closer you get to a forecast, the more you get in the way of definitive answers from the computer models, a lot more accuracy there. But at least we can see more about what's going on for the next seven days. And today is the first day this gets issued, so we'd like to be able to put this out there to make certain that everyone is paying attention on this. And here's why. Again, we are not really quote-unquote close to the ocean surface, the Gulf or the Caribbean or the Western Atlantic, but we are in a good position to get remnants of those storms plowing through the Carolinas, Georgia, coming up from the Gulf of Mexico, 
Uh, back a few years ago, her, what was left of Hurricane Cindy came through Memphis, caused a lot of wind damage there. And don't forget about Katrina, storm that we all know and remember there coming up and causing a lot of wind damage. It was still a hurricane well inland because of that feed from the Gulf of Mexico. So it is possible that we can get affected here. Add to that, if you are going from this area to the coastline anywhere between Brownsville and Boston, you want to pay attention to the forecast because if you're going someplace that a hurricane is heading into, the only thing you may be able to do is shelter in place or the best thing is to turn back around again. And that's a wasted journey. It's going to waste a lot of time, effort, money, confusion. Uh, it's not a great idea to do something like that. So forewarn is forearm. So even if you're here in the News 12 viewing area, Now's the time to get acquainted with the forecast. Pay attention to what's going on. So if you are traveling to any of the coastal areas, know what's coming your way beforehand and be prepared for that. So please make sure that you're staying up to date on what's going on. Do not go into a dangerous situation if you don't have to. That's going to be one of the better ideas to try to stay as far out of that, if at all possible. So please use caution. Please use common sense. Please keep it tuned to News 12. We'll keep you updated on that, not to mention the fact that we will keep you updated on what's going on out there on our social media pages. I'm on a lot more than the TV station per se, so you'll find me out there someplace with no question, and we'll be able to keep you updated on that. Uh, into tomorrow, again, kids heading for the bus stop, a lot of field day activities going on, a lot of graduation going on, warm with some isolated thunder out there in the afternoon, but during the first bell, getting to school, humid, partly cloudy, not expecting anything in the way of rainfall. Speaking of classrooms, as we go into summer school, there's a lot of summer camps out there that might need some signs thrown in. If you would like to have us visit, again, if you're a teacher or summer camp counselor that would like to invite us, please go to our website, wdef.com slash weather, and click on weather in the classroom for more details, and we'll keep you updated on what's going on there. But we do need your invitation to show up someplace. We just can't go to one place and be there for no reason whatsoever. Misty, a little bit of drizzle out there for tonight as we look at our CHI Memorial Stadium camera, and we see, again, a lot more in the way of rainfall coming up as we go into tomorrow. Down Town looking at clouds very low and back toward Lookout Mountain. Kind of hazy, drizzly, muggy, foggy out there for tonight. So we are seeing some clearer skies, but not by much. And hopefully going to be seeing a little bit more in the way of uh, clear skies for the rest of this next week as that drier air filters on through, depending on how much we get out there in the way of smoke coming down from Canada. Chip Chapman is still on his personal leave for tomorrow, so make certain you tune in for Todd Highslip. His forecast coming up bright and early on our morning show starting at, starting at 5 a.m. Eastern. And, of course, he'll be on at noon as well, and I'll be back in the afternoon to keep you updated as to what's going on there. Questions, concerns, ideas, find me through WDEF.com slash weather. My email address, A-O-N-E-K at WDEF.com. So take a look there. If there's anything you'd like to talk to us about, more information about what we have on our weather blog, anything else going on, just please let us know. And we'd be glad to bring that up and see what we can do about including it or getting rid of it or whatever. Just give us an idea and drop us in a line and just give us an idea as to what you think about our weather blog here. I'll have more coming up at 11. Mr. Todd Heislip, Bright early tomorrow morning so stay tuned for that and of course keep an eye at wdef.com slash weather for more details there i'm chief meteorologist austin onick thank you for tuning in to weather overtime stay tuned for more on air and online with news 12.